Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Trogdor and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Recently, the first season of the NSTL concluded. The regular season, I should say. There are still people doing playoffs matches and whatnot. But my time in the NSTL is over. The 11th week concluded. We are done. So I figure now is a time for me to do a season recap. I'm going to be doing this in the form of just going over each of my draft mons and talking about the general performance, highlighting a couple particular matches where they did well and whatnot, and just talking about my season as a whole. Nothing scripted, just how I feel about everything, what I plan on doing going forward, all of that jazz. So right here you see Zygarde. Zygarde 50%. The first thing I picked for 18 points. I was expecting this to be an absolute behemoth. I had my eyes set on it being the league MVP on just setting up and destroying things because I have seen how good Zygarde can be. Now unfortunately that did not go quite as planned. Of the nine games that Zygarde came to, or there are two that I didn't, I believe the first game and one of the other ones, anyway, it was able to get shut down hard every single game that it came. People were very scared of Zygarde, I don't blame them, and every single team that, like, that prepared for Zygarde had an immediate stop to it, so it was not able to perform nearly as well as I expected to. I had a couple interesting sets. I, I did some sub coil, some dragon dance, some weakness policy, some choice banded. It did a lot of things well, but again, just got shut down really easily. There were just a couple times that if I had made predictions different and gone for a second dragon dance or had a different item to get more damage out, it could have done some serious work, but unfortunately it fell short. The maximum number of kills it getting in a game being two, which for something as threatening as this is in draft format is kind of pathetic. So I'd say my overall, my overall, how I feel, not so great, maybe kind of medium. I thought I had some interesting sets, but I definitely could have done something better. Like I never even brought a special set with Core Enforcer or anything like that. And I just went a little bit too offensive and just clicked Dragon Dance and then lost. My biggest chance was against, I believe it was week 5? Which week did I go up against Brandon and Super, Super Salamence with his Portsmouth? I think that's the game, yeah that was week 5. That is a game that I think Zygarde could have really shined. I had my weakness policy activated and had I made one prediction differently I could have swept his entire team. Likewise when I was going up against... DFP in week 7, I was able to use my Zygarde to 1v1 the Vaporeon based on my foreknowledge, based on what I had already figured out about the set and having Lumberry. It came to the point where the Berry hadn't even activated and I could have saved Zygarde for later to do the work just because I know status would have been preferable for him to stop my Zygarde. But I ended up winning that game whereas I ended up losing to to Brandon and his Ports Meowth, which I'll go over that in a little bit, why I lost that particular game. But in the end, Zygarde was kind of a disappointment. There were a couple of games, like I said, I sh should have just gone for the extra dance, should have brought a different item, and it could have done some serious work. So let's go. Come on. There we go. So I had Tapu Bulu on this team, which is the first time I've ever used Tapu Bulu, so I was really excited to see exactly what it can do. It, I did not play Tapu Bulu well at all. Only ended up getting three KOs in a total of eight games, which for something as threatening as Tapu Bulu is, I did a terrible job with this. There are so many interesting sets that I thought I could have brought with Tapu Bulu, but I just fell short every single time because it was a little bit awkward for me to use. Mostly because its move pool let me down, like it had Wood Hammer and Leech Seed and Substitute and that was about it. And 
I don't know, it just kind of let me down. I was a little bit too... Okay, so... I think the few games that I brought Rock Tomb were big mistakes because that just did not play well at all. Tapu Bulu should have just been a serious wall breaker, sub leech seed annoyer, and just... Yeah, I, I played Tapu Bulu quite poorly and I was really hoping to do better with it just because of how well it synergized with Zygarde and Heatran. It was a pretty mean Dragon Fairy, Dragon Fairy Steel Core that I had as my first three picks. And even, as much as Zygarde disappointed me, I think Tapu Bulu was even more so. Especially the game I played against Grey and the Yveltal Town and I had Tapu Bulu coming in and he had no switchings for it. I brought the completely wrong moves. I didn't even bring Superpower when he had a Registeel. I should have done like a sub leech seed or just like banded Woodhammer Superpower. So I, I did not play Tapu Bulu well. That was my fault. But again, it's move pool let me down. But at the end of the day, I know what it's capable of. And I know I really underutilized it because there's just... Again, so much that I can do. I mentioned Heatran, and towards the beginning of the season, Heatran kind of disappointed me. But as the season went on, I became more and more aware of just how good of a Pokemon it is in draft format. It ended up being my KOs leader, a total of 9 KOs and 8 deaths, which I believe that was one of two Pokemon that ended with a positive... KO, KO differential, which says a lot about how much I misplayed on things. So Heatran actually was not just the, the KO's leader, but the passive KO's leader. So it had five direct kills and four passive KO's, which most of that was like from toxic burn damage rocks. So it was actually the only thing that got passive KO's, which says a lot. The reason Heatran let me down is I made a bad mistake of only having one rocker on my team, and that rocker was Heatran, so more often than not, it got pigeonholed into that role as an offensive stealth rock user, or especially defensive stealth rock user, when there are so many other things that I could have used it for, like Choice Scarf, the, the Torment set, just the Annoyer, just there. I underutilized Heatran, but it still performed very well. It could have completely swept in my very last game versus Ellie when I fell short of Solar Beam. Yeah, so it was doing very well that game versus Ellie. And then I used Solar Beam on Piloswine and got low rolled. And I could have kept, kept getting KOs with it after the fact, but you know, got low rolled, things happen. And likewise, my penultimate game versus Cameron. I led with Heatran, and he led Volbeat, and I didn't kill it right away when I could have, and I let it set up to plus six in front of me, so that was a huge misplay. I was a little bit more like, oh, I need my rocks right away, instead of going for another Lava Plume or Earth Power, which that was yet another mistake with Heatran. So I think the... And, oh, another mistake with Heatran. So I mentioned this game earlier with Zygarde, my game versus Portsmouth. I forgot that in the end it was my Gyarados and Heatran versus his Suicune and Jirachi. My Heatran was scarfed with Earth Power and I already knew that I outsped Jirachi. I could have used Gyarados to weaken Suicune just a little bit more, taunt it again so that Heatran could have cleaned up that game after already, already getting two KOs. So I don't know if that's just because I assumed like, oh Suicune beats Heatran, it's over, I give up. Or for some reason forgetting like oh there's no way I can take out both Jirachi and Suicune if I had weakened it enough with Gyarados I could have got it with just clean it up with an earth power after being taunted and then KO Jirachi with an earth power so yet another mistake with Heatran so there's a common theme of me getting really good Pokemon but not playing them very well which yeah is interesting so would have been done so much better if this was my only, if this wasn't my only rocker. But in the end, it was like my, my KO's leader, which speaks for itself. So it was very, uh, could have done just a lot better. 
So I talked about Gyarados and entering my most, um, I was most excited to use Gyarados this season, but I only brought it to six games and it only got KOs in the very first game that I played. The first game that I played, Gyarados did amazing, used the Z power, used the Dragon Dance, was just punching holes left and right, and after that I was like, yes, Gyarados is doing exactly what I want it to do. And then after that, just what happened? Gyarados' power was underwhelming for me. It did not have a lot of good chances to set up. I did not use it well. It's It was just underwhelming. The power creep that's been happening over the past few generations just makes Gyarados like not as threatening of a mon as it used to be. If it was Mega Gyarados, that would have been a different story, but it's regular Gyarados. Again, not going for Taunt on the Suicune in my Week 5 game, huge mistake. And just generally being bad... Even as my Z user, like Mr. Fish, I'm sorry, just didn't do so well. I got a little bit too caught up in the set of like, oh, can I use Dragon Dance this week? No, no good. I could have been like bulky sets. I could have done like Annoying, Thunder Wave, really great, especially defensive, just Intimidate, Switch Around. Not my, not my best moment of things used this season, so... Disappointed with Gyarados, I would draft Mega Gyarados in the future, but I don't know, the regular Gyarados for the price that I got it was kind of underwhelming power. I'm sorry, it's still my favorite Pokemon, still my mascot for, you know, not my team, but my personal YouTube stuff. But yeah, in the end, I don't know if I'd uh, play it the same way, even though I did have the Z power. Which I almost got one kill, that was a low roll on a Vaporeon with the Super Sky Sonic Strike thing, whatever. It was just not, not enough. Again, damage very underwhelming. Anyway, who's next? Who is next? Right, Mega Man Ectric. What I thought was the best value that I got for 13 points for a Mega that's got like 135 special attack and 135 speed. The problem with Mega Manetric is it runs exactly one moveset. Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Overheat, and Hidden Power something. There were a lot of games where Mega Manetric was like, wow, I can just Volt Switch freely after I get rid of this one thing. And oh, he didn't bring this one thing, I can Volt Switch freely. I enjoyed using this Pokemon. There were a lot of games where it filled a very crucial role. The only problem is it's very predictable. It's just so easy for someone to be like, oh, he's gonna use this, and lo and behold, because it only runs one moveset. I liked having the immediate fast and the immediate power that it brought to my team, and having the like Volt Switch initiative and all that jazz. Of the eight games that it played and only got five kills, there are a couple times where it was my MVP, like um, my week two match, it did kind of exactly what I wanted it to and forced the prep like I predicted, but I fell short that game. And otherwise I was just able to, you know, pick up a couple KOs here and there and just do fast things. Played a little bit too safely with it. Uh, you know, going for Volt Switches when they switch in and I could ground type when I should have obviously gone for the Hidden Power Ice or Grass, but Yeah, for a lot of the games it was just kind of kind of there for me to switch into things and It was a wait it I wouldn't say it was a waste but If I had gotten like a different mega and just a better overall electric type that could have been more diverse in its movesets that would have been fantastic but end of the day I still think it was good a good value pickup and it fit my team well at the time but it's not something I'd use again unfortunately so Hariyama was one of the things I was most excited to use I love bulky fighting types and I was had quite a few plans with Hariyama made it initially I made it one of my Z users because I got belly drum but then I realized its only priority is Bullet Punch. It doesn't have Mach Punch for some reason, which really disappointed me. And after that, I switched my Z users around. It got... It played too many roles 
and fell short of too many. It, I basically wanted Hariyama to do like too many things. I wanted it to be spadef. I wanted it to be guts. I wanted it to be, you know, a uh, priority cleaner. So it just did too many things and got weakened a little bit too easily. And for things that are so, so for something that was one of my bulkiest Pokemon, not having recovery really hurt me in the long run. And it's just something that gets worn down so easily, especially when I bring a gut set with Flame Orb. I think its best moment was versus, uh, who was it, Don Fanatic. That was my week four game. I just made a couple really great predictions with Hariyama, and it was able to do enough damage to his team early on, especially against the Mega Altaria on the Switch, which, well, I planned for that very well. But there are a couple times where I needed it for very specific Pokemon. My opponents realized this. It was both the games that I went up against Kieran Black because of course there was a transfer and I got to face it twice. How fun. And I needed it for that Pokemon and my opponent realized that and wore down my Hariyama until such a time that I was able to come in and it just fell short. Again, it was probably just because of its lack of recovery and I just wanted to do too much with it than it was able to. What other games did it do well? I want to say, yeah, died too early, couple of games. The Altaria was a really huge, huge play. And I was a little bit too hesitant to do things like Guts Assault Vest to be able to switch in on status, which a couple games would have been huge for me to get the Guts activation while still having the huge bulk from Assault Vest, but I think I played a little bit too safely with my prep for a few weeks. Um, and wait, there was one time I said earlier that... Didn't I? Oh wait, no. I was thinking of something else. I was thinking that I used Toxiconic once, which was not at all the case. I'm going through and remembering all the battles that I had. Um, I think uh, the biggest highlight was my game versus Brendan, not to be confused with the other Brandon, uh, the Trenton Thunderous. It came down to Hariyama versus Mega Gallade, and it was more a misplay on my opponent's part, but Hariyama was able to win me that game, and just because of its, its bulk and its power, and being able to skillfully dodge Zen Headbutts. So I think that was the biggest highlight of the match, the game where I played Hariyama the best and kept it around for when I needed it to. But if I if I kept it as a Z user and been able to just like use Z close combat on a few things, so many teams just did not have switch-ins for that. I was too set in the idea of going for the Z belly drum set, but then when I didn't see Mach Punch, I was like, oh, forget about it. There's nothing I can really do, so. Only ended up getting three kills, which I've seen other leagues where Hariyama is the kill leader, not just for the team, but for the entire season. And yeah, just didn't come true for, for me. I was hoping to do uh, more with it, but yeah, unfortunately. Cloyster was probably the thing that I was happiest with at the very end of the season. I only brought it to three games, but I won every single one of those games two of which won it with Cloyster. So Cloyster got four kills in total, not terribly impressive, but it ended up with the highest kill differential of my entire team. I ended up switching my Z Crystal from Hariyama to Cloyster in the end, which I don't believe it used a single Z move, and I only brought it Z Crystal once when it was gonna be for Z Hyper Beam to like just break through something on my opponent's team. I brought a lead spikes cleanup with ice shard set once, which it won me that game versus Don Fanatic. I was able to just clean up with ice shard that game, and I brought a shell smash set twice. Interesting thing about the, those two games to which I brought Cloyster, both the instances I was going up against the top team of the league in that time. 
first my week 7 against DFP in which Cloyster got a shell smash and won. The, and then my ninth week versus Brendan and the Trenton Thunderous, which I brought a Shell Smash set as well, but I never exactly got a safe moment to set up that game. Am I thinking about the right game? No, I was I was thinking about a completely different game. It was my weeks six and seven. Sorry, Cloister doesn't actually have that correlation between it coming and me going against the top opponent top person of the league it was weeks four six and seven respectively don fanatic king bub and dfp that i brought cloister again the first time it was brought was just the spikes and ice shard and then it was week six and seven that i brought my shell smash set so against bub i never got a safe moment exactly to go for my shell smash and clean up which was my intention there were just a few there were a few things that went my way in that game it was mostly who was it Kofagrigus did an amazing job that game uh going for the trick room Gyarados actually did well for me that game I believe when it went for the Z Thunder am I thinking of the right game um I'm sorry this was weak yeah week six was Munchlax United Kofagrigus got a great mini sweep. And no, it was a different game that I brought the Z Thunder on Gyarados. It was mostly Latias being Scarf versus his Mega Latias, which. Um, yeah, Me regular Latias ended up besting Mega Latias. Bulu did a good job that game. Zygarde 50% did well everything just did well that game like I was talking about how some things were disappointing but that particular game everything actually did pretty well I was hoping to win it with Cloyster but I didn't in the end I didn't need to because I never got a safe chance to bring it in and set up uh, as much as I saw his team and wanted to just go right for the shell smash and win but he had the mill tank which was like the one thing that could stop me so so yeah, Cloyster probably for the value was my favorite thing to use. Second favorite thing, we'll get to my favorite thing that I used in just a little bit. I mentioned Cofagoras a few times. This was another thing that was just fantastic. It was a huge staple on so many teams that I brought and was just able to do so many things very well. Week one, I was up against Mega Lopani and Cofagoras completely shut it down. It was just an amazing Pokemon, both offensively and defensively. Unfortunately, it didn't have reliable recovery outside of Pain Split and Rest. I was able to almost get a Rest Talk set, but was unfortunately shut down by a by Unaware Clefable. It, you know, and eventually it was set up fodder for an, an Aegislash, Slash, but you know, that kind of happens. It was able to shut down really scary threats. Again, I mentioned Mega Lopunny, and it was also able to completely shut down Mega Heracross. Even though that particular game versus Gray, I fell short. But if I had, you know, played better early on that game and used things that I needed them to be used for, it would have been a completely different story. But Kofagrigus, I think, was the one thing that did extremely well. Its highlight, I believe, was the Trick Room sweep I got against Brendan and Trenton Thunderous. That was the game where Gyarados, Gyarados had a very interesting set with the Z Thunder just break through his walls. And it was thanks to that that Kofagrigus got a Trick Room, got a nasty plot, and just tanked so many hits and got essentially a free kill every time he switched something in. So... Kofagrigus essentially won me that game. It didn't have like a perfect, like, okay, I brought it to eight games and it got KO'd seven times, but you know, there, there's no correlation with it being the it winning me games, unlike Cloyster, but it certainly pulled its weight. And this is something that I would definitely use again in the future. A lot of the times I look at a team and think what set Kofagrigus could be best for, but then it doesn't fit the rest of my team, so I have to change up the set a little bit. But it's one of those Pokemon that it can run so many good sets 
versus a team and seriously put in a lot of work. Again, with the offensive trick room, with the calm mind, with the, the rest talking, there are just so many good things that it does. And having defensive ghost types are fantastic, especially because, well, my team didn't have a ghost switch in. I had no normal type, nor did I have, I don't believe I had a dark type on my team but either. So I had no resistance to ghost. So my best bet was to have Cofagrigus and basically eat a hit and then hit back really hard to stop offensive ghosts like Mimikyu and Blacephalon and Haunter. Well, in the end, Zygarde did more damage to those than anything else, but that's kind of what Cofagrigus was for. All right, Yanma. This is, uh, I'm assuming, what everyone was waiting for. So yes, I drafted Yanma as a meme Pokemon, and I had a lot of fun with Yanma th this season, even though I only brought it to two games. For one point and getting one kill, that's probably the best like KOs per point that it had, that my entire team had actually. So it was a Z user of course because of the budget I had one point left over and I was allowed to use one more thing. And with speed boost, there were actually a couple times where it had a half decent matchup against the team. It fell short the first time I brought it versus Zangoose in, the in his Baltimore team. But if I was able to break through his Nidoqueen, Queen, Yanma could have cleaned up his cleaned up that team. And for a for a meme pick, having the potential to clean up, it's kind of amazing. Also had the potential to clean up versus my week eleven opponent, Ellie, where it got its one kill against the Zapdos with Ancient Power, which was amazing. But then because Clefable wasn't worn down enough, I fell short with the Z Bug Buzz. So, not at all a disappointment for a one value Mon that was just kind of amazing. And I would draft it again. Like, there's some things that I. Eh, they're, they're, they're kind of fun using, but I wouldn't draft them again. But things like Cofagrigus, I would draft again. Zygarde, I would draft again. Yanma, I would definitely draft again. Just because for one point, like a speed boost user that can. Or even tinted lens with the bug buzz, it's kind of amazing. And lastly, I had Latias, which I managed to snag in my very last round because I had the budget and it was still there and it was actually great. So seven KOs in seven games is pretty good. Seven kills against means it ended with an even differential. And Latias is just such a fantastic all around Pokemon and yet another thing that I would definitely draft again. I brought some very interesting sets, most notably safety goggles against TFP, and then I brought Choice Scarf a few times, especially versus Bub when I needed to go up against Mega Latias. And my last last match, it was able to trick away an Evio Light, which was kind of amazing because that really helped out other members of my team work that game. So. There's just so much Latias can do, like like Trick Scarf, like Spadef, like, you know, I could even run Safety Goggles again in the future. And it's, yeah, just one of those all around really great things that I would be using. I said that so many times. Um, Jed Waifu, what were some highlights that, yeah, it was, it was basically Revenge Killer most of the time that I brought it. Um, there are a couple times, a couple of games where it was just kind of, kind of there, didn't do much, but it averaged one kill per game, but I think it was like, it would get two kills and then zero kills and then two kills and then zero kills alternating between actually doing really well and just kind of being dead weight. So as much fun as I had with using Gladius, there are a few instances where in retrospect, I was like, eh, well, like could have done a bit better could have used healing wish could have you know done some recovery like should have realized how much hazards hurt my team and used defog and all that stuff so 
In the end, I think its best performance was versus Munchlaxer United in my sixth week. But I, w I wasn't disappointed with this. Of in terms of my level of disappointment, it's I wasn't quite as happy with Cloyster, but I was definitely more happy with Latias than the likes of Zygarde or Bulu or Hariyama, especially Gyarados. Gyarados is my number last in happiness with that particular Pokemon. So I did go, I think I had talked a little bit about each match going over, going over my team and I'm not going to, you know, go into full detail about every battle. But all in all, I, for the very first draft league that I completed from the beginning of the draft to the end of the season with my own draft and my own sets and all of that, nothing that I inherited or nothing that just ended up dying out at the end, I think I did pretty well. I ended with a to with a um, five to six record and a minus seven differential. Not the best in the world. I don't really win big that's not exactly my thing but I think I played very well I think I brought some interesting sets I think there are there were certain opponents that definitely made me brought out the best in my ability of course some people bested me sometimes it was because of luck sometimes it was just because of certain uh, certain things certain volbeats that I overlooked completely and other times it was just like, I had a really good team, I had a good good plan going into the game, but I just get home, I'm ready to play, and suddenly my brain is blanking and I forget that Gyarados has taunt, or I just completely blank in prep, thinking like, oh, I should do this thing with Bulu and not bring superpower for some reason. So in the end, yeah, I, I, I made a few mistakes. They're, my opponents all played very well, I believe, but... In the end, yeah, five and six, minus seven, not not bad. Uh, my best win was my first week with a 4-0 win, and that was the biggest win that I got. My biggest win streak was two in a row, weeks six and seven. So nothing spectacular, but overall, pretty good. So I'm really looking forward to going into future drafts with this community. I'm you know looking forward to. PTL, which is sort of like not NSTL Season 2, but it's going to be PTL Season 1, so that's going to be exciting. I'll make a full video about that when it is officially starting, but stay tuned for that draft stream. I've got a few interesting plans up my sleeve, going to try out something completely different. I know what mistakes I made drafting this team, so I'm going to correct those, and yeah. I'm going to follow up this video with a Q&A, so if anyone has a question for me, you can leave the question in the comments of this video. You can ask me a question on Twitter or on Discord if that's easier for you, but I prefer comments in the comment section on this video. I will probably answer most of them, but yeah, YouTube comments will take priority. So yeah, if you've got a question about, you know, a specific play that I made, a you know, general question, like, you know, what's my favorite Pokemon? Like, why didn't you draft this, etc. Yeah, leave a question in the comments and I will hopefully make a Q&A video if there is enough interest. So yeah, that'll, this will be my penultimate NSTL video and yeah, if enough of you ask questions in the comments, I will make one final video that is a final Q&A. So thank you for watching this. Again, leave me a question about the NSTL in the comments and I'll go over that. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more Draft League content in the future. I'm almost at 10 subs, which is like nothing, but you know, it's the first milestone that every baby gets to. So yeah, leave me a sub and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.